It's time for Country Victoria to say hello to the V8 Supercar Championship Series. This is the first real regional round in the series. Later on, of course, we go to Bathurst and then Simmons Plains in Tasmania. But there's a country feel here and winter is just as cold as Tasmania or the mountain for that matter. Today's schedule is one 300 kilometer race as we build up to the big enduros. 33 starters, 100 laps. This is a curious little race, this, as we review the full grid for the Winton round. We've had such changes in the weather. At first, we thought it would be all wet, and that was the pattern, of course, all day yesterday. But now we've had a drying track. We've had a dry session, and that's changed a few names around the top of the order. We start looking back to what they were doing on Friday, but even then you couldn't get a gauge of what was going on because a lot of the guys were running old tyres, taking it uh, like a test session, and then when a bit of rain came there and a red flag, they lost momentum. So a few questions still to be answered. A few guys who may be down at this end of the field who can uh, reap far greater points as we get set for a start. I think Max and Richo are going to start from the pit lane as well as we go green. Tanda makes a great jump. Ben slots in behind. And you have to watch for chaos here because three into two does not go in turn one at Winton. Well, we had three Ambrose exactly. off the edge of the road. And that is exactly what you were saying. Shortcut here and a dangerous one. Oh, feeding back into the race, Dumbrell. And he did it the right way. There was talk among the stewards with the drivers about that very spot and how difficult it would be when there's a packed field to get back safely onto the circuit. Dumbrell did it very well. Got the car sideways and just fed it back in nicely. And he had a little room. Tanda leads the race from Craig Baird. Steve Johnson, well positioned too. But the usual suspects are there, although Ambrose has lost a few positions with that little off. It's all up there at turns five, six and seven in this opening lap, Bill, where it gets pretty ugly. And if you happen to be back beyond about position six on this racetrack off the start, if you look at the elapsed lap time at the end of lap one, you get buried in the pack here as you try and find racing space. Look at them all feeding through turn nine. Tander, Baird's in hot pursuit. He's managed to hang on with him, which is important. Ambrose back on the road, but lost a couple of spots in the process. Greg Rust, what was the story with pit lane there at the start? Neil, I can tell you, you were spot on. Both Max Wilson and Stephen Richards had to start from pit lane. The reason being congestion during those siding laps when they come in, re-top up with fuel. Both of them did not get out before pit lane closed. That is disaster for Stephen Richards when you consider that he's second in the series right now. He had a demister problem coming into uh, qualifying yesterday. Couldn't bank a lap, qualified outside the top 20. Not good when you consider that this is his home race. No, and Larry Perkins will just be fuming about those sorts of things. He prides himself on making sure that he runs a tight operation. Craig Baird is applying serious pressure to the back of Tander on the run out of turn three there, and they actually made very light contact, and Garth got a little bit twitchy on the run down to four. So Craig Baird's performance not just strong in the wet build. Well, we knew that this car had pace. Craig was talking about 25 horsepower more than he had earlier in the season where he had did have a few good results a few blips on the radar but not consistently there was a bit of garbage up there at turn eight as well in the middle of the road i noticed uh, and it's a replay of the start you see that tanda makes a pretty good jump looks like baird got too much wheel spin russell goes down the inside and then there's a three car scenario here for turn one with stevie johnson in the middle and then scaife takes a great opportunity there to sneak through between both sbr cars and it forced ambrose into the grass on the right hand side between one and two meanwhile paul dumbrell had to take to the grass as well no damage done but a heap of spots lost it'll be very dirty it already is on that section of the circuit as they Across the start finish line. Tanda Baird, Johnson, Scaife, Ingle, Bright, Barguanas running strongly. Likes this circuit's had two round victories here. Ambrose in eighth place. McConville running strongly. The Gary Rogers motorsport form has been across the garage this weekend. Craig Lowndes up to tenth. That was a, sorry, Billy. I apologize. That was a very important move that Scaife made to be able to get down between those two cars into turn one because track position is king here. The pit window now is open, by the way. That's very, very difficult to be able to make a good move that sticks at Winton. And uh, to be able to ooh, escape, just clouded that inside ripple strip there at turn six and the car left. He was sizing himself up for a look down the inside of Stephen Johnson into seven. But uh, when the car is off the ground like that, there's nothing much you can do about it. A few of these drivers were hoping for wet conditions today. Of course, Craig Lowndes 
was one of them. There's plenty of logic in that. Mechanical black flag for Jason Richards in the Tasman Motorsport entry. He was quick in the dry session this morning, which See, was interesting. Watch Scape here on the way into turn 11. He'll look for room down the inside. He got a pretty decent sort of an exit, but that car of Stephen Johnson's is up to the task at the moment. He came off the corner well as well. Let's go back down to Greg. Neil, the first of the teams gearing up for the pit stops. It's a little quiet down here at the moment, but Aussie Mail and Triple Eight are standing by. A bit of radio chat between Garth Tanda and his team. He felt in that opening lap or so that he couldn't get 100% throttle in the parts of the track where he needed it. It seems as though that's cleared itself right now. Greg Murphy, if anyone's wondering why he's down the back of the field in qualifying with the rain, that team had a disastrous day yesterday. He started today from 33rd. They had battery issues with both cars yesterday both of them were dead they couldn't get them changed in time they lost track time but in the warm-up it was promising for him he was ninth in the warm-up and rick was seventh pit stop here for john bauer and one of the better electrical cars also pouring in radisic tire change there this guy's really monstering johnson and the lights have come on the number two car and he in turn is being pressured by Russell Ingle. Fastest man on the track so far is Tandra at a 25-2, so they're not flash times, but you'd expect that in these track conditions, low temperatures, a lot of water around the verges and a pretty fat load of fuel to boot. This is an interesting race for both Baird and Stephen Johnson in that they're not used to starting this close to the front. Stephen said before the race, he was very much looking forward to being enjoying some clean air and being among the top guys as Barguana takes an exit and that will be greatly disappointing because he had good track position he was seventh at the time and he's in a major trouble here of course the outfield and the infield are still very wet the grass was slippery we had Jason Richards uh, come off the circuit in the practice session this morning after putting down that quick time I mentioned and he simply could not get back on and he was only a couple of meters off it let's go to the pits Interesting, guys, for a pit lane. I was watching that when Barg spun off the track. Ambrose went down the inside. I think it was into 11. It was wet offline from I could see from pit lane. Got it all crossed up, jumped the curb on the inside, and Barg's went off. So there might have been contact there between those two. Still Johnson in third place ahead of Scaife. Russell Eagle as Brad Jones comes in. So Aussie Mail whipping their cars uh, in and out quickly. I'm sorry, Billy Ambrose went very wide then and looked like he actually was right off line up there at turn seven. So we'll see whether that's affected his lap time. I expect it has. Ambrose just really missing out going down to turn one in the opening uh, lap, getting squeezed off the edge of the road. And he now has to try and recover from that. Incidentally, the track temperature is 14 degrees. The ambience 13. And this is the first time since Friday afternoon that we haven't had rain falling on the track. And we're still seeing this black flag warning being issued to Jason Richards. The rear bumper is loose on the number three Tasman Motorsport car. Here's a replay of what I was talking about before. And, uh, ah, now a problem here. And that's the reason why Barguana went round. That was neck and neck. Here's another angle. Heavy on the ripple strip here and the apex. Well, close, to, very difficult to call. Need to look at that one. Well, this time last year, there was a plenty of controversy at Winton. There is I Simon think that's Simon Wills. Wills. It's, um, and that's somewhere awkwardly positioned just near the final corner at turn 12 as a bunch of cars come in. There's Richards with the rear bumper loose on the car. Seaton with a brand new car this weekend. A lot of drivers bluing on the radio for various reasons at the moment. Scape has got by Stephen Johnson and Russell Ingle in behind him, followed by Jason Bright. Tand is the leader, Baird still second. Scaife now to third. Here's the pass at turn 10. Zinger replay shows that he did it pretty easily at the end. And Stephen left some room. No, it's turn one, I apologise. And Scaife just gets the job done nicely on the run up to three. And Ambrose is fighting back to rejoin this leading group. Tanda has a 1.3 second lead. It's been a hard fought one. Now Russell Safety Ingle car. is putting pressure on Stephen Johnson but as you say uh, Neil the safety car is out so they will squeeze up again they can take a breather I think counting the incident that Darrell was telling us about Ambrose has been off three times now Russell pits very cleverly on the safety car yeah those that didn't pit then missed a golden opportunity because right now you need to get it done and get it out of the way 
Uh, it'd be interesting to see who actually kept on driving then. Well, if they were debating it on the radio, they needed to just get him in. Well, I'd be surprised if Ambrose didn't feed in as well. But let's have a look. They're all coming in now. Ambrose is well, in the pits. No, see, Tander and Scaife didn't pit. That's going to prove costly for some of these guys. This will scramble this race. Jason Bright, the first of the cars to have made a stop. So this race really has a very interesting complexion now. One thing that uh, may get these guys out of jail to some extent, Billy, if we get a safety car a little later in this race and they've been able to establish a gap on those that have taken this service, it might tend to equalise a little bit, but that won't be particularly good news that last safety car period for these guys that were not in a position to be able to take service. And there's various reasons for that. Sometimes the other car is in and there's only a single boom available per team. And uh, somebody else in there at the moment, Simon Wills. Uh, sometimes they just don't have the gear laid out in time. It can be congestion issues, preparation issues. So Scaife is breathing now on Tanda. Ingle having a good run so far, then McConville, Bernard, Longhurst, Kelly, Morris, Noski, Murphy, Ellery. Craig Lowndes has turned a very interesting corner in his career this okay, weekend. He's away again. Well, he seems to be, uh, something's happened. Oh, they may be, uh, he's had a circuit breaker jump out and he's popped it back in, or he's, uh, maybe there's a, a reserve fuel pump system in the car or something. Look, I don't know how they've got it configured, but... <laughs> He's underway again. We'll get to the bottom of that. We'll get the boys on the job, see if they can find out what's happening. This is Ambrose. On Longhurst. He's past Ellery, obviously. And Marcus Ambrose fans, he's down in 12th at the moment. This pressure continues at the front between Tanner and Scape. Seeing a replay here, Bradley Jones, Mark Winterbottom, and we're on board with Paul Radisich. It's all a bit willing between turns 11 and 12. And uh, this is the stuff I might mention that goes on virtually every corner of every lap of every race and uh, depends on where you are in the field as to how much of it you have to endure. That was around 21st position and uh, it's quite a battle. Everything's staying stationary up the front at the moment. The last time through 25-6 for Tanda. 7 it was on that lap, same lap time for Scaife, one tenth slower for Ingle, another tenth slower for McConville. Kelly was doing a 25-8, the same as his team owner. Bernard's in the 26s. Everybody outside the top five is basically in the 26s. Jason Bright's in pretty good shape at the moment. There's, a, there's six cars at the top, then there's a gap of three and a half seconds between the sixth car, David Bernard and Greg Murphy. Very close then down to uh, Paul Morris, Jason Bright, the first of the cars to have made a stop. Bright, right in that battle. And he has a 2.1 second gap on Marcus Ambrose. So, as Neil said, if another safety car comes out, then it may not make a heck of a lot of difference here. But if there isn't, then Bright and Ambrose are in uh, very good shape. Daryl Beattie. You're right, Billy, I'm standing pit lane watching it from here. You see Ambrose, he's got clear air. He is making a little bit of time on those that front group uh, up ahead of him and uh, a lot of those guys haven't even done the one stop yet so he is in a good position. Gee, look how close this is between Mark and Garth at turn 10. And, uh, Scape is certainly able to make a little bit of distance he's under brakes and he's not too Kelly. bad in the early part of the, the turn. Sorry, I'm looking at McConnell Kelly and Kelly McConnell. here. Yeah. But the, um, the two teams in equal yeah, uh, situation. Same, same configuration but the um, is that the, both the Valvoline cars are pretty good in a straight line. They certainly seem to have a, a, a tiny advantage there and they put it to good effect. So this is fourth and fifth, these guys, 26-3 last lap and 26-4 for them respectively. And they're, they're about uh, four or five seconds behind the leading group. Incidentally, Lowndes has got his helmet back on. That's the gap to Bernard that I was talking about earlier, now out to three and a half seconds. And there's a bit of a sandwich there with Murphy, Morris, Bright. And then Marcus Ambrose. There's Morris just behind Murph. And then uh, Jason Bright. And there's the gap to Marcus Ambrose, which is closing. Marcus getting right away from Stephen Ellery. There's been other drama on track in the dry. And this is Marcus Ambrose pressuring Jason Bright. These are the two guys that have made their first stops 
And look at this, Ambrose overshoots the corner and is heading very rapidly to the pit entry. Uh, he put it into the, on, off the edge of the road and caught the water, and that's why he got in so much strife. Here it is here. See the water on the exit of Turn 11? And once he's out there, absolutely no grip, straight through the grass, the gravel, and went, oh, well, I'll flick the pit lane speed limiter on there and I'll just come in the pit lane. So he then asked the question, can I take fuel? And they said, no, Scape went off as well makes a blue because of the amount of debris that's on the road down there. He tried to pick the throttle up. Oh. McConville and his teammate Rick Kelly almost nailed him. Here it is again. See, it's the same water. And in fact, it's probably from the splash from Marcus where he kind of carted it wide. So there's just no grip there when you make those little errors and you, you know, six inches either way and you're a goner. And Mark was very lucky not to actually endure a lot more damage there. So Ambrose asked the question of his crew, can I can I at least turn this into a positive and grab some fuel? Do you need about 195, 200 litres of fuel to do this motor race? You burn about 1.8 litres a lap around here, depending on who you are and how your lap speed's unfolding and your configuration of your engine. And they just simply don't have the opportunity to put fuel in at the moment. And it's too early. Well, Ambrose has lost about 30 seconds or probably more in that uh, unscheduled run down pit lane. It was almost like a drive through penalty in the end. Tanda and Ingle. It was his own enforcement, wasn't it? He'll give himself a drive-through penalty. <laughs> well, these two guys now have a six-second buffer on the rest of the field. That man, Gary Rogers, would be fairly pleased because Cameron McConville is right behind third place Todd Kelly. David Bernard is now another 4.9 seconds back. Then uh, we have Greg Murphy, Jason Bright, and Mark Scaife now running together with Paul Morris in that group as well. Just further expanding on that point about fuel, Billy, if you just use those simple numbers, and they're only reference numbers, they're not necessarily deadly accurate, uh, as I said, but you need to basically get to around about lap 40 or thereabouts uh, in order to be able to get in, because the capacity of these cars is 120 litres, and uh, you've got to get there or thereabouts. Now remember, we also had a safety car intervention, so that stretches that a little further, because the fuel burn um, is stretched. You obviously don't consume as much fuel in the safety car periods by a very substantial amount. So the expectation is that these guys will be able to run probably to around about lap 45 by my very rough estimation. Bernard here fighting for fifth position just in front of Greg Murphy. Jason Bright is in this pack as well and he is the effective race leader when you factor in the pit stops. Now Scaife has been greatly disadvantaged. He's behind Bright but has yet to make a stop. So that's the penalty from that little spin earlier because he was trying to build track position in the leading group. Just behind them is Paul Morris in a similar position to Scaife. He's not uh, made his first stop yet, neither is Stephen Ellery, who's a fair bit further down the track there leading the next group. Rick Kelly, though, who's behind Ellery, is the second of the cars to have made his first stop. And then there's a cluster of them. Stephen Johnson, John Bowers there, he's handily placed as well. And of course, Ambrose has lost all the gains he made from that early stop. He's well down the order. He's having one of those days so far. And Murphy is uh, looking every which way around David Bernard here. But the guy that's really very handily placed in this little scenario is clearly Jason Bright. He's taken his stop. He's seventh on the road at the moment. And uh, he's got good car pace. And what will happen here at some point, if these guys uh, don't end up uh, making a steaming wreck in front of him somewhere, is that the world will open up in front of him and suddenly, hey, presto, he's going to be the leader of this motor race. But weird things can happen. And he's right in the middle of a fairly vigorous battle. He's got to be very careful. In overall strategic terms, he's best positioned. The advice to him needs to be don't get involved in anything too aggressive because this race is going to come to you. But that's all very well said from here. Not as easy to do when you're in that sandwich we're looking at at the moment. Yeah, well, Murphy's being very aggressive with Bernard, obviously. As we ride with... And uh, Bridie's on the phone to his guys saying, tell Murph to get out of the way. And they're saying, well, we're negotiating, but it ain't that easy because Murphy's got his hands full with Bernard. And uh, you can see cars of uh, relatively equal performance. It doesn't take much of a move one way or another to be able to get in the other guy's way. And Murphy's clearly got a faster car here at the moment. There's not much he can do about it. He's going to have a big lunge here. He's got position. He's going to have to force the issue. He goes back to second gear. Oh, a little bit of contact. And well, uh, Noski's involved in all this as well. And all marks out there where there's absolutely no grip, Mark Noski, that is. Yes, uh, Mark's drifting back very rapidly through the field. and um... So Murphy through, and that now means that Bright can work away on Bernard. Oh, Scaife's going to go up the inside of Bright, and he gets it done too. 
He's going to be wrongly positioned when they get to eight. No, Brady think, thinks, damn it, I'll just lift the throttle. I can't be bothered with all this. Well, Scaife, Scaife has uh, not made his stop, so Bright was just factoring in uh, that little bit of conservatism you were talking about earlier, Neil. Probably a pretty smart move there from, from Brighty. Incidentally, <laughs> Brighty's... Bit of dark cloud in the background there, and incidentally, uh, talking about Murphy's aggression and the suggestion from the PWR team to Kmart that maybe he should let Bright through. Well, that's changed now because they've uh, they've been shuffled around a bit, but Murphy really needs to stay in front of Bright if he's to gain anything from his next pit stop. They're just trying to counsel uh, Jason Bright at the moment to be patient, and it doesn't look as bad as it currently seems. He's a bit frustrated by being bottled up in the traffic, but he, he just said a moment ago that it uh, it made sense to just let Scafie go then. Back with the race leaders, Tander and Ingle. Their gap to Todd Kelly is five and a half seconds. And Kelly in turn leads McConville by 1.6. Then there's a 7.4 second gap back to this issue we were talking about a moment ago with Murphy, Bernard, Scafie, Bright and Paul Morris in there as well. Stephen Ellery's there too. I believe Gary Rogers has now got the, uh, the headset on and could have a chat with us. Gary, I know you're pretty happy uh, if you can hear us, uh, I think you're pretty happy with the performance after qualifying. What about your race pace? Uh, well, so far, so good. Bill. It is Bill and Neil, I assume, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, no, so far, so good. A long way to go, though, but it's pleasant to see us heading in this direction for a change. It's been a while. You must have been pretty happy. Did it really start... Well, no, it started earlier than this, but did you really make good gains in the recent testing here? No, not really. I mean, we went OK in the testing, but from Darwin on, and we made some changes at work with some guys and got back a few of the old stages and... Uh, we've gone ahead quite well since then. I mean, it's nice to see the car, both Garth and Cameron's car, both quick in the dry and the wet, because clearly not every race we run in either. We had to uh, we had to wait a few rounds. In fact, it was Barbagello, and there's a little bit of luck in the qualifying session to see Cameron racing up the front. Uh, didn't have a lot of luck in Queensland, but are you happy with his progression uh, as a new member of the team this year? Oh, he's done a great job. I mean, early on in the year, we uh, rolled him over, to be quite honest. We didn't give him a car that was good enough, and uh, I'm sure he got very frustrated with that, but true to his spirit, he kept at it. In the last couple of meetings, we have improved his car, and I think today would show, I mean, as I said before, the race isn't over, but to be in the top four or five in the field of V8 supercars today, I think, is not a bad effort. Well, Jason Bright's just unleashed himself there from David Bernard, and he's out after Mark Scaife. Uh, what do you think your strategy is going to be, Gary, with Garth and Cameron yet to make their stops? Well, we're hoping, to, uh, Bill, to be quite honest, that we get a safety car about now. And when Scaife went off there, I thought our prayers have been answered. But, I mean, clearly, if we don't, we are going to have an issue by the time we'll lose having to pit under the green. But we figured 300 k's around here with 32 cars, there's every chance it'd be more than one safety car. And uh, that's the punt we... we uh, took at the start and at this stage um, you know there's still a long way to go our tyres are holding up well and I see no reason why we can't press on for a number of laps but with this little bunch that's sort of 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th there I reckon there's every chance we could get a safety car out of that lot. Well we'll keep an eye on the skies and indeed the times thanks for your time Gary, best of luck. Thanks Bill, thanks Neil. Bright is now getting away from that little cluster and he's uh, rapidly coming up on Mark Scaife He's been in all kinds of trouble today. We're a third of the way through this race. Tander and Ingle are the leaders, not much between them. The gap now to Todd Kelly is down to just over five seconds, so Kelly is making some progress there. There is Mark Winterbottom stranded, and that will mean a flurry of action in pit lane, I'd imagine. Let's go down there. Wait. He's going to join the track, he's going to have a bit of clear air, which is good. Mark Scaife's due in now, he's just pulled up. A wheel change for him also. Some indecision by some guys as to whether to go with it or not. David Bernard made a late call, but the WPS team have taken service for Bernard under this safety car period. Glenn Seaton is in now. Now also, the Gary Rogers team are on standby, but both McConville and Tanda missed that entry. Will they do it this time around? We'll have to wait and see. Rick Kelly's in a strong position and indeed has been quite prominent in a lot of the practice and uh, qualifying sessions now, but it was hard to gauge form through those sessions because with all the red flags, as we resume racing here at Winton, all the red flags came out. A lot of guys did not get the fast laps when they uh, wanted them. Quite a few were cancelled out. So there's Kelly on his way. Now, 
Glenn Seaton uh, is immediately behind him, but Jason Bright is in fact second in the race. Glenn's down in 27, so he's lap down. And then Noski, who's in the same sort of position as Glenn Seaton. So there's a few cars here in the mix that are a fair way down. And I must say, one of the notable performers so far, and he's kind of slipped under the radar a bit through that sequence of pit stops, Anthony Tratt is up in eighth position. And he's just behind Craig Baird. Although, I wonder if that is going to fall Ingle into is going to come in for fuel now. Can't work out which of the shell cars that is. I think it's Stevie Johnson. Greg? Neil, I think it may be, judging by the radio chat, I think it might be Warren Luff. And the description he's giving the team at the moment is that car 18 has a brake problem. The pedal went all the way to the floor. And suddenly, the brakes must have gotten some bite out of it toward the end and that locked the rears of the car, Neil, by the sounds of it. We just saw Steve on the track there. It's definitely yeah. Warren parked and, uh, well, 19th position he was. When they circulate again, uh, he'll shuffle down the order. We'll take a look at how it all happened. Yeah, this is turn three and uh, just backs are in gently. No great drama, but uh, never a good feeling when uh, that happens to you and the pedal goes away and the safety car is deployed once more. So uh, Ingle will take the stop. And uh, what lots of people Kelly. having a bit of a think now on strategy. So Rick Kelly in, John Bow in. So we've had a sequence here, Ambrose is in. And lap 38, uh, you were talking around lap 40, so... Both SBR cars are in, they can't service them both at once. Maybe they've judged that it's better to stand in the queue than be... Your reset, your reset. Saw this situation at Barbagello, didn't we, Neil? A lot of guys decided yeah, to stay in the They do for tyres. It's not as not quite as friendly for fuel. Daryl. See, Neil, the, like you said, both cars. Russell Ingalls hung back to let Rick Kelly out, like that incident in Darwin when they all got jammed up. He's now lined up in behind Marcus. Marcus now a delayed stop there, but full of fuel, and Ingalls in now for the fuel stop. That's uh, that's amazing. Uh, that's uh, they'll have hurt Russell's result there by doing that. Considering that Marcus was so far down the field, that then means that both cars are probably going to underperform. That's a bit of a. I mean to think that through before. Uh, I know what you're getting to the point, but it, to me that's like it sort of negates the result from both cars. I know what you're getting at. Russell had the track position, didn't he? Absolutely. And therefore should have been at the head of that queue if that's the strategy they were taking. So. But what has happened in that time is a dramatic shuffle. Marcus Ambrose, contact there with Rick Kelly, and these guys are battling for second position on the circuit. You'll notice the dent, it's more of a dent, my apologies for that, it's a ripple bonnet there, and Ambrose had an earlier collision with John Bow, he's not further, not much further down the track. Well, that happened, in fact, under a previous safety car. Keep a look on the left of your screen here as we see Murphy break, and then there is a little bit of a sandwich, a domino effect. And he hits Bow. the back of uh, Lowndes, and then they all just do one of those kind of things peak hour incidents and that was under the safety car so we've had that incident we've had a flurry of pit stops and what's happened in that flurry of pit stops oh, look at this chaos oh. here chaos kelly is and a lot of strife is that scaife it's scaife it is yeah. scaife my apologies and he'll be staying there Jeez. and right well i was just about to say the man who came out much worse for wear after that flurry of pit stops was this bloke here because he was really, he should have been in command of the race. Mark Scaife, of course, is stranded. Let's have another look at how it happened side by side. Dumbrell was there, but uh, Bright is turned around. Scaife well, is the, yeah, the, um, flung into the infield. Scaife. We need to see all that again. The actual reason why Scaife goes to the infield is that Bernard hits him, and but there was already other stuff going on before that. And uh, oh, oh, here's another again. incident, another WPS car, and Bernard, who is very much. I've got a feeling there might be some serious damage here. He might have to pit. But oh, well, there was another incident potentially as he got back and settled himself down. One of the Valvoline cars was right in the firing line there and looked like he had to break hard and take evasive action. And here's 
a look at that incident. As we saw uh, uh, a lot of things going on there. Bernard going backwards, pointing in the wrong direction, trying to redress the situation. Further up the front of the field, we have Greg Murphy, uh, Rick Kelly that is uh, in front of Russell Ingle, but Greg Murphy is your race leader. He's out in front of them. And uh, Ambrose has let Ingle go by. He was talking about that on the radio earlier. He said, I don't know that I've got enough pace and if uh, just let things settle down for a lap or so and then I'll, if possible, I'll uh, make it easier for, for Russell. And obviously with all that stuff that was going on in the last corner, the opportunity came then and now Russell's up. He's got a pretty speedy car today. Russell looked pretty good right from the very start. What was less obvious was the speed of the Kmart Commodores. I mean, we did say that uh, the form was clouded by the fact that we had wet sessions and there was a mad scramble to have the car set up. If we look at Bernard, I mentioned there that it looked like Bernard had some more serious problems, uh, and he does. In fact, uh, that's terminal. But uh, Russell's really looking threatening on the back of the Kmart car here. Kelly looked to be uh, going a little better than Greg Murphy when you compare the two Kmart cars early in the weekend. But as I say, uh, it was hard to read the form with the variation in uh, practice uh, and qualifying conditions. Murph now is running in the 125s out in front. Ingle also in the 125s. And this man, Rick Kelly, in front of Russell Ingle is a little bit slower. In fact, by about half a second on the last lap round. And as they circulate again, uh, we'll get another picture of just how they're going. In fact, the times are a lot closer, but obviously Rick holding Russell up, and that's why their times are close. But uh, definitely the car speeds with the Stone Brothers car. How did, where did Murph come from? Extraordinary. The sequence of pit stops has been in his favour, but also he's got the speed, it seems, to perhaps carry on with the job. Well, Murphy took tyres at lap 35, fuel at lap 36, and that was a brave call at that point, but there's been so many safety car interventions, he's away. I mean, on those fuel figures that we talked about before, from lap 36, he needed 115.2 litres to get to the end which probably made it pretty marginal. But the fact of the matter is that with all these safety cars, and uh, he really doesn't have any drama at the moment. The next thing that is lurking on the horizon here is the weather. And, uh, Scafie's stuck there, and he's in conversation with Rob Starr at the moment, and he's uh, most unimpressed with the universe. So it's Murphy, clear track now to these guys, Rick Kelly and Russell Ingle. And his teammate, Todd Kelly, is uh, also struggling to communicate with Matt Crawford. Hip blokes are full of water. Kelly back in 14th. So certainly, at, at this race meeting is always the same. It's always the same year in, year out. In, year out. It's, it's a lot of aggressive racing. It's a difficult place to pass. And uh, I think the reality is that Scaife is going to actually uh, stay there because the car is off to the infield. It's in a safe position. And I think that uh, they won't drag that car out. Look at Russell up on the outside here of Rick Kelly. He's clearly got a faster car at the moment. I understand that Ross Stone is standing by. You there, Ross? Yeah, I've got you, Neil. I know you're busy, mate. Uh, we were holding our breath there at one point. I thought when you had to hold Russell up in order to fuel Marcus, that might have been a bit of a sticky move, but it's paid off for you all right, hasn't it? Yeah, it is. Actually, Russell wasn't too happy about it, but at the end of the day, we had no option, really. Um, I think uh, as our track position now shows, yeah, it worked out very well. But, uh, what was the situation with Marcus getting into the back of John there? Do you know what triggered all that? Yeah, Marcus came came uh, on the radio and said, um, I don't know what the, what the words were, but he just plain made it blue and um, just uh, drop kicked John. It looks like you've got good car pace and uh, all over the back of Rick Kelly at the moment. You're going to be able to sneak up another spot or two here. Yeah, I think we can. Um, Russell should be much stronger than Marcus because Marcus had a stop for tyres at that first pace car, so, um, and Russell, you know, stopped about lap 30 odd, so his tyres are much fresher, and I'm sure that um, he's got plenty of car speed. All right, thanks, Ross. Let you get back to it. Appreciate the time to uh, talk to us. Okay, Neil, thanks. Ross Stone from Stone Brothers Racing, and uh, certainly the way the race has unfolded now with those extra pace cars, as Ross just said, holding them in the queue and refueling them it ended up being the thing to do, but I can imagine. Old Rusty would have had steam coming out of his ears in the pit lane waiting to take fuel. He's got a bit more steam on at the moment because he's desperately trying to find a way around Rick Kelly. He does have, it seems, a tiny bit more car pace because he's now slowing this group down and Ambrose is getting closer again to the back of Ingle and turn John Bowers in there who's in position five. Murphy, Rick Kelly, Russell Ingle, Marcus Ambrose, John Bauer, Max Wilson, Stephen Richards who's had 
a fraught weekend. He's going to get out of jail here. He's got 156 points against his name at the moment in seventh position. And considering that he did qualifying and he couldn't see, and he started from the pit lane today with other dramas, that's probably going to end up being a pretty fair result. Let's go back down to pit lane and Greg Rust. Neil, more than a bit of uh, calculation going on and calls for various drivers to consider economy over last few laps. But uh, I guess given the safety cars, as you've alluded, that may have put pay to any concern about the need for economy as they push on at the front. Stephen Richards, during his pit stop, made a, a shock absorber, a rear shock absorber adjustment. The team on car 11 are mainly concerned about ride height on Richo's car. Warren Luff keeps complaining about a, a brake master cylinder problem. They've asked him to wind a lot of the pressure to the rear on car 18. He's had a couple of offs, but he's pressing on right now. Daryl? Yes, i just been talking to the Kmart team and also Ross Stone earlier. Ross mentioned I asked him about Greg Murphy's situation when we originally spoke about him stopping eight laps before his window for fuel. Ross said yeah for sure it is too early. Obviously what Rusty said with the safety car that's going to help them now but that team's still keeping a close eye on that fuel burn. Ross Stone said we were maybe one lap too early but we feel like we can go the distance especially now with those extra safety cars. And if you roll your mind back 365 odd days to the round here last year fuel became an issue at the end of the race and several drivers didn't make it and uh, in fact, one or two from memory also actually came in to take another fuel stop, which turned out to be obviously an illegal thing to do. You can only take the one fuel stop. So, well, let's stay back uh, a year because Sambro's won this round. A very, uh, a very big moment for the Queensland-based team. He also was on pole position. And Ingall's record here is pretty good too. He won here from pole Bowie, in 2001. Bowie. Up the inside, going to be contact here. Yep. Oh, Ambrose turned around here. <laughs> And that is not a good spot to be stuck in. That is going to cost Ambrose big time. You can see that coming. John got uh, sort of up on the ripple strip and up the inside a little bit. And then he was in a position where I knew as soon as Marcus turned down, as soon as he turned down, that there were, the two of them were absolutely going to be all over each other. Ambrose loosened the seatbelts there. Murphy, Kelly and Ingle in the top three. John bound after fourth. Here it is. He's, uh, Marcus left a huge hole. Uh, but John's not really far enough up the inside there. And see, ultimately, as Marcus has co come back down to make the apex, the two of them just got no choice but to touch. Bang, round he goes. Ugh, not good. So now, the... Right up on the ripple strip there. And we keep saying it, but this slippery grass means you do not have to go far off the circuit. Off is out. And uh, Marcus doing absolutely everything. And he's going to stay there, unfortunately. So, uh, well, he nearly lost 192 points in Queensland. He is uh, going to lose perhaps 192 points potentially here. The, the attrition rate has not been too dramatic. So we'll have to wait and see just how many points he finishes up with, but it won't be good. John Bow should have plenty in the bag if he can keep this momentum going. He's sitting on 174 at the moment. Just behind the front three of Murphy, Ingle and Kelly. And then Max Wilson, who's another driver who's slipped up. I don't think there's going to be a safety car here, so I think Marcus is there to stay. I think Mark Scaife is there to stay. in the telecast reverse is hard to find in this car so you have to pick the lever up move it across to the left and then push it forward you can see that mark is having trouble often you have to rock the car to be able to, able to actually engage the gear meanwhile greg murphy 4.9 seconds up the road from russell ingle where well, he struggled to qualify and get himself set up but uh, as with eastern creek uh, back in round two and a few other occasions he has fought his way through against adversity it's about me he was 33rd yesterday <laughs> it's, it's incredible russell ingle second and uh, in pretty good shape but he's nearly five seconds behind murphy now and uh, the speed differential is negligible at the moment on their last couple of laps rick kelly in third place about 4.3 seconds back max wilson another three and a half seconds back so that team has just worked their way through very quietly as well. Paul Radisic may well have been up there somewhere too, but he had two drive-through penalties in this race. The first was during a pit stop. The second was during the taking of the drive-through penalty. He sped in pit lane again, so the black flag came out a second time. Stephen Richards in fifth place, then Jason Richards, Cameron McConville, 
Brad Jones, Paul Morris and Marcus Ambrose still still stranded. And so is Mark Scaife and there he is. He's at the exit of turn 12. Marcus is up uh, perched between, well really came off out of turn eight, uh, turn nine. It's going between those two loops of road there. So meanwhile, Greg Murphy's uh, on top of the game. 25-7 on the last lap. Lots of consistent lap times. Most people have sort of been in that the good guys have been in the 25 and three quarter range for a fair chunk of this race. So tyre consistency has been very good. Kelly's losing ground to the top two. Ingle and Murphy pretty balanced, but Rick not quite able to match those times, nor is Wilson uh, for weather. that matter. See the weather in the background there. It seems to be going a little bit around the circuit at the moment, but uh, you never know. It's a good shot there explaining just how dark those clouds are. But I must say, they've been banked up there uh, for, for quite some time. So it's hard to say uh, just where they're going to go. Now, mixed feelings because in, in the Aussie Mail Racing uh, Garage, it's their home track. Uh, and uh, not far up the road is their home base at Albury. Brad Jones in eighth. John Bauer was right up there in the firing line until a drive through penalty. And I wonder how Kim Jones feels about all that. Well, Billy, John has just served that drive-through penalty. The officials, Kim Jones, have obviously looked at that incident involving Marcus Ambrose. Give us your take, given the fact there's been a bit of a bit of contact between those two today. Uh, I don't think you can bring the two things into, into parallel. Uh, each incident should be judged on its own merits, and they judge that, obviously, John wasn't in the right or was it, what didn't have enough space or wasn't up beside him far enough. In that particular incident, I don't think it has anything to do with what happened earlier in the race. Um, John's racing very hard. The Aussie male cars are going very, very well. Um, and, you know, he, he's, a, he's a racer. And he saw an opportunity, obviously, and went for it. On the breaking news side of things, what about that old bloke who had a crack in a Formula Ford today? Sorry? What about the bloke who had a go in a Formula Ford today? Can you tell us about that? How was your day in the office there? Uh, a bit squeezy. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Thanks. Yeah, I think just looking at that incident that we saw before of John on Marcus, there was um, a big gap, and what Kim pointed out is quite right. He's jumped in there, but then the gap just turned to nothing instantly, and that's Marcus's prerogative, I might mention. And so John would have known that he was in a no-win position there. There's not much he can do. Neither of them can make their cars vanish. So uh, John's tagged the right rear, nowhere near, up alongside far enough, and he would have, you know, the initial jump that he made down the inside, he would have wanted to be further up. Uh, Marcus has gone around. John served his drive-through penalty and he's dropped down the order now massively. Meanwhile, Brad in the other car is actually in eighth position at the moment. That's a very spirited battle. It's Stephen Richards, Jason Richards, Cam McConville, Brad Jones, Paul Morris, Steve Ellery. They're all sort of mixed up there in a bunch. Leno GP is, uh, later tonight after Formula One. Let's go back down to pit lane with Daryl. Yes, Neil, I'm down here with Robbie Crawford. Robbie, 33rd for Merv, the 25th for Rick, first and third on the road. Yeah, no, he's driven his ring pace off, and the guys have done a really good job on the strategy, and hopefully it all end up like it is now. What about earlier when Merv went to pit? I heard you telling me he was eight laps outside his window. Is it all right now with that safety car? Yeah, no, the fuel will be still very tight, but uh, hopefully the guys have done their calculations right, and we should have about two laps left. Thanks, mate. I think the other news with those guys is they clearly made the cars better as well. They, they weren't particularly speedy, even in the dry here. Uh, remember, they tested Phillip Island now. This is an old test circuit for them. They're now testing Phillip Island. But uh, they've actually made the cars quite reasonable. And, you know, Murph's rocking along with good pace at the moment. Last lap was uh, a 26 flat, 4.7 seconds up on Russell Ingle there on the Shell Helix scoreboard. Rick Kelly in third place, Max Wilson, Stevie Richards. Richards here is fighting not just for track position over Max Wilson, but also a few extra points in the championship. Although, even if he stays where he is, given the stranding of Marcus Ambrose, it should be worth a championship lead to Stephen Richards by 110 points yeah, uh, on our calculations at this stage. That's what I was saying earlier, Billy. I mean, just the um, getting out of jail is what it's all about for him today. And even in his position, even if he gets a monstering from the three or four guys around him, because obviously he hasn't got the car that he's had in recent rounds, it's not as quick as it's been, but even if this little bunch here manages to round him up, a big deal. The way the point structure is in this championship at the moment, it's not going to hurt him. Finishing is the aim of the game. DNFs absolutely choke you. Now, the most appropriate guy to add his two bobs worth to all this is standing down in the pit lane at the moment. Let's go back down and hear from Murray Perkins. 
Hey, LP, the, uh, the weekend has changed for the better for you. It didn't start so well, but uh, looking good as far as the championship is concerned for, for Stephen Richards, considering what's happened with Marcus. Well, yeah, but this race is not over, let's not forget, you know. Marcos is in, a, in, the, in the sand where he doesn't want to be, but it only takes a tenth of a second. Richo could be there, and, and what I'm looking at right now is I think it's Jason Richards behind me, I tell you. There's, I could have a lot better guys behind me than Jason Richards, uh, who might put you in the sand as well. Just tell us about the car's performance. The boys made some changes to it during that pit stop. It's obviously improved things. Well, yeah, it's, it's better, and look, you know, uh, it goes up and down, and whether you get the car right or wrong and so on, but look, we've got, we're where we are, and that's, that's life just got to finish and I mean it's still 30 odd laps to go. Just tell us about the problem yesterday for the car and, and just expand a bit on what happened to Stephen. Well he, he, he wasn't competitive as he wanted to be in the wet and uh, that was because he didn't uh, get the right adjustments and all the little gadgets and that weren't adjusted properly and uh, and so on so the car didn't feel right and you can't do a good lap time that's that's the way it is but sort of salvaged uh, from there and uh, Starting the race in the pit lane, now all those things weren't good, but uh, yeah, he's got himself up to a, a good position now, but he's still got to finish. Thanks, Matt. Well, I hope it's not a bad omen that we've spoken to Larry Perkins, because you might recall we spoke to Gary Rogers earlier when he had his two drivers up the front in this race, and since then, Garth Tander in that flurry of pit stops has dropped to 16th. Cam McConville is still hanging in there in seventh position, but Larry's quite right, it can all turn the reverse way very quickly as we see enormous pressure here and Max it's a second was love, just reminded second love bite from uh, Stephen on uh, Max Wilson and uh, so Larry's observation is 100% correct can all change very quickly and Jason is of course uh, pushing very hard on the back of Stephen Richards as well which adds urgency to the situation but Conville who I just mentioned is behind all that uh, uh, activity just there and Brad Jones is uh, behind him there's a real collection of cars here paul morris stephen ellery next and then a second gap to todd kelly here's a wider view of the situation tony longhurst again having a consistent run he's in 12th place not looking like he's going to threaten todd kelly at the moment but here we go as richards just jams that nose up a little bit and in fact brings about a moment for Max and does gain that fourth position and a few other cars have slipped through adding to the frustration of triple eight racing Tony Longhurst there in car number seven is now just behind Max Wilson who slid back to 11th place Stephen Johnson is next in 13th this is a guy who was up the front early on so too Jason Barkwana and Anthony Tratt who worked his way up as uh, far as eighth position is now back in 15th ahead of Garth Tander and Craig Baird, who was on pole position. Jason Bright, back in 18th position. There have been a few must have tumbles a problem. here. I think Bowie must have gone off there, looking at all that garbage coming of, out of oh, the car. Oh, massive clot of mud came off the splitter there. So when Max has gone off, that sprayed the track with water and debris, and uh, John's been one of those... Keep an eye on the water, because it got a gut full of sand. So Bauer running around in uh, the unenviable position of 21st. Here we go with, uh, this is Richards on Wilson. And a little bit of contact there. You see Wilson trying to get back in. McConville is there. He slipped through as well. He's gone right out in the greasy stuff and all the splashing and the garbage that comes back on there and then I reckon Bowers fallen off on the same stuff within a lap or so. Mark Scaife is in a similar position further around the circuit. I don't believe he's left his car to do that at this stage but they've both been sitting there chatting with their teams back in pit lane Neil and uh, Marcus was breathing very heavily after he left the circuit obviously very upset. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Scaife is actually making uh, engineering observations about the rest of the field from his car <laughs> and he was just advised about the Ambrose thing. He said, what's he doing that for? So obviously uh, much safer and warmer inside the car. So there he's he having is. a yak away at the moment. The other big news is that uh, Greg Murphy, the race leader, has had that lead hacked down to 3.36 seconds by Russell Ingle. They now both made their tyre stops at around the same time. Uh, Ingle was lap 34 and Murphy lap 35. Yeah. So uh, got very good pace and the guy that is battling is... Um, Rick Kelly because he took tyres on lap seven and so he's out there on uh, 
very well used tyres. That's the other changing focal point of the race because Rick Kelly is now 16.7 seconds behind Ingle, lost, losing ground all the time, but he's falling back into the clutches of Jason Richards, Stephen Richards, Cameron McConville, Brad Jones, and to a lesser extent, Stephen Ellery. Ellery's lost touch with that group. Here's Russell Ingle right now on a mission here. And with 24 laps to go, certainly not out of the picture. Don't forget the prospect of rain as well. So we have some very interesting battles coming up before this race is decided. Lots of valuable championship points being tossed around out there. Stephen Richards carrying 168 of them. So we're very much looking forward to it, but in pit lane, lots of action as well. Well, Billy, you touched on a moment ago the fact that Jason Richards is currently sitting in fourth place. That's an outstanding effort by the Sydney-based Tasman Motorsport team. They're eagerly watching their driver from the pit box at the moment. He's completed both his stops. They actually, if you recall back toward the beginning of the race, had a problem with the rear bumper of that car, and they were told by the officials that they needed to pit. The bumper, or part thereof, it flew off. They pitted at that time, took the tyres, the fuel stop went well. And although they haven't had a chance to test that car between Queensland and here, you'll recall they had a, a fire in the airbox in that car and it's meant a, a bit of repair work between this round and that. They're doing a pretty good job at the moment. Jason Richards in fourth outright. If Ingle or Murphy wins this race, it'll be the fifth different round winner in seven meetings. If Murphy wins this race, it'll also be the seventh different winner in 14 races. As we watch Jason Richards using the ripple strips there, fending off Stephen Richards. He built a bit of a gap on Stephen a little while ago and a bit of a slide there as the tail gets out and Stephen will be focusing on that. Cameron McConville also showing pretty good speed too. Last time round they all showed uh, very similar lap times. Ambrose is back in the Pertec Falcon. The two guys up the front though consistently in the 125s although Russell Ingle has taken more time out of Greg Murphy. The gap now down to 2.97 seconds. Will Ambrose be able to drive out of trouble here? The belts are going back on. Rick Kelly, incidentally, is now 18 seconds behind Ingle, but only three seconds ahead of Jason Richards. Yeah, I think that the sort of speed that Russell's showing at the moment is 2.6, 2.7 seconds on there, down. Marcus. And uh, he's making a couple of tenths right, a lap. He's, he's definitely in the game here. Speed limiter on as well, see if that helps stop the spinning. Murphy will be aware of the situation, of course, in contact with pit lane. It's not a case of tyre wear, as we said, but uh, it's just sheer car speed. Murphy took his fuel stop on lap 36, and Russell Ingle took his on lap 38. So very similar race strategies. To see if Ambrose can rejoin. Here well, we go. Be another safety Max car Wilson. here. Max Wilson in the gravel, and this will squeeze up the battle. So Murph's going to lose that lead anyway. And there not only go. that, but uh, Rick Kelly will definitely uh, fall back into the clutches of uh, the two Richards as Ambrose tries to use those deflated tires to maximum effect in the mud. So safety yeah. car yeah. 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 reverse as well, mate. The safety car's coming out now, so you make it too. The problem for Marcus is uh, almost needs to have a go at going the other way because it won't go up the hill there. So Murphy, Ingle, Kelly, Jason Richards, Stephen Richards, Cam McConville. Yeah, she'll go backwards better. Gravity's on his side there. And then um, Cam McConville's still having a good run. So is Brad Jones. Now, Marcus is going somewhere, but I'm just not sure where. I think he's going back to turn eight. Yes, he is. Stand by. Here he comes. A big charge at two kilometres oh, an hour. Will she go up the hill? Don't know. No. I don't know. I think he's gone out of the frying pan into the fire. Maybe he can here. have another run back at turn nine here now. He's going forward again. Give us some, Marcus. Oh, what a way to finish the race. The championship leader battling to get off. He's actually got a bit of pace up now, so he'll be able to charge onto the road here. Well, that'll bring a round of applause, ironically, from the... Uh, Great, mate. Come on, let's get back now. We'll put another set of tyres off. Fans, and he'll go in for a pit stop and maybe, depending on the weather and a whole lot of other things, might get a point or two here. I don't know. The points run very deep. I wish we thought it out a bit earlier, This is how Max Wilson uh, came to grief. Paul Dumbrell involved. No, Tony Longhurst, I should say, involved there. Slipping through was one of the WPS cars with all that uh, drama. So uh, Marcus in now for a, uh, another set of tyres on the back because all the air's out of the ones that are there at the moment. 
Actually, it, hey, mate, it's probably half a... How are your feet? Do we need to wipe your um, feet dry? Are you okay? That's a good thought. Alright, mate, I'm just going to allocate my heart until. Might make you go a bit faster, mate. So they'll stick some rubber on it. And uh, they obviously had a bit of a think about it and thought, hang on, if we let some air out, that might get him out of there. And, you know, he might pick up a point, as you say. I don't know. I don't think he'll have completed it. No, he, he lost a few laps. Done then 59 again. laps and then to figure out what you'd need to do in order to be classified here. There's we're 78 laps into the 79 laps into the race. Yeah, you can be classified. But also yeah. if there's heavy rain and, and guys go slewing off the track everywhere, as we've seen in the last couple of days, it, we might just get vaulted up the order that way. Just by finishing. Um, you want to be very careful here now for the next half a lap or so just to figure out what's underneath him. What a day, and poor old Mark Scape also, but that is a much more serious bogging for him. 17 laps to go and Ingle is all over the back of him and Murphy is fighting tooth and nail using every inch of the circuit and more to stay in the lead. Rick Kelly behind them already losing ground. He didn't have the speed before and he doesn't have it now. Two second gap there but he is under threat from Jason Richards, Stephen Richards, Cameron McConville, Brad Jones and a host of others. And that safety car intervention was not particularly good news for Greg Murphy because it eroded the margin that he had and if anything Russell had a tiny bit of edge there's the field streaming through and you can look at the amount of debris on the side of this road and the number of scarred cars dirty cars look at that talk about scars that car sat in the paddock for 20 odd laps or more and eventually Marcus let some air out of the tyres and got it underway between turns eight and nine meanwhile his teammates been having a nibble here at the back of Greg Murphy he locked the rear brakes down here last time and actually lost a little bit of ground for this lap, but he's got a bit of car speed. Can he do much about it? Well, at the moment, Neil, looking at the timing monitor, Marcus Ambrose has 30 championship points from where he is, and Mark Scaife, 18. So it was worth their while getting those cars back into the race. Well, not so much for Scaifey, of course. The championship is pretty much gone for him, but Marcus Ambrose very much looking for points wherever he can get them. Luff. Exits now. Final corner, turn 12, so Luff's off. It. And uh, that's retrievable there. He's just got to wait for a bit of traffic. He's got the right wheels on the right part of the course for traction. And he does, in Look fact... Look at the amount of debris on the edges of the road. It's absolutely staggering. It's one of the dirtiest circuits I've ever seen. Glenn Seaton up the inside of him. And contact. Around goes Luff. 0.2 of a second is all the margin between these two guys this battle to the flag what an amazing race what an incredible recovery for greg murphy now he has to defend there's a strong rivalry here on the circuit both panelists on v8 superstars incidentally which is coming up monday august 16 tickets on sale phoning that number so there might be a little bit of a discussion about this race by the time we get there, but the Oran Park round is still in between. The gap from Ingle back to Rick Kelly was 2.7 seconds last time round. Murph was just on the ripple strip on the exit there, and the thing just kicked sideways a little bit, and he lost a little bit of time. So is Rick Kelly now. He's lost half a second in that last lap alone, but he's gained a second on Jason Richards. Richards and uh, he's still in position there to attack Kelly but you can see all the cars queued up behind him including Rick's brother Todd Stephen Johnson in the mix there a few of these guys are actually not really where they appear to be there are uh, plenty of laps down one of those is Simon Wills and this is where focus and concentration is such a critical thing and Murphy just has to ignore Ingle, but be aware of him if you understand the conflict in that statement. You, you need to do your own thing, get the most out of yourself and your own car. Generally be aware of where the other car is. Maybe make yourself six inches wider, left or right, just to make sure that you can spoil the run a little bit. But at the critical end of the race, so legally Murphy is allowed to be a bit hungrier and use a bit more of the road and just spoil a little bit and not invite Russell. But that margin has stayed the same now for a lap. Oh, locks a brake, Greg Murphy. Just pinches the brake at turn 11. Greg, 
Neil, more than a few guys with their fingers crossed down here in pit lane at the moment as far as conditions are concerned. I'm no weatherman, but it's cooled off a little here in pit lane. You can certainly feel it in the air. The track temperature and the ambient have dropped a degree in the last few minutes or so. 15 in the air, 16 on track at the moment, and some thick moisture laden. Big black clouds moving in. Will it rain? Who knows? Well, yes, Rusty, we mentioned earlier, is Dumbrell makes his way back on it. Look at the stuff that's being dumped. A lot of water deposited from the wheels there. So whoever's following Dumbrell will have to be very, very careful. That's what happened earlier in the race. When there was an off, I think it was Scaife uh, got onto a bit of a wet line there. So uh, we might have another look at Dumbrell's incident. Here it is. Oh, well, he's in a, a real scrap with John Bow and he picks up a lot of water going through there. In fact, he Luckily, he had the momentum and uh, he was able to force his way back out. But look at the water he's picking up there. And he deposited a fair bit of that on the track, so they'll have to be careful. 14 laps to go here. Ingalls had a tremendous record at this circuit. He's never been out of the top 10 here since 1997. And uh, five times in the top four in seven starts. Oh, look at this, and Russell's made a blitz. They've both gone off. They've both uh -oh. gone off at turn 12. I saw Russell running wide. It's because of the amount of garbage that was oh. left on the road there before. Jason, Jason Richards is off as well. So is Stephen Richards. Rick this, Kelly would have snuck through. This happened a few years ago here on the exact same corner. Another car's gone wide. Paul Radisic, well, he's way out of the picture Watch anyway. Your front, your front spoilers, Unbelievable scenes as we spot... First of all, Ingle running wide, and then you could hear the audio from Murphy's car, and you knew there was a drama there. Both off at turn 12. Unbelievable. Well, what's Rick Kelly going to do? How's he going to play this? He's in the lead now from Murphy, and McConville has snuck through. This is because of all the water and garbage on the road here. Between these two turns, this is 11 and 12. Look at this. Off. No grip. Water. That's the Straight section. Off. That's the section where uh, that I was speaking about, I think, where... Um, Look at this. Where there was water dumped on the circuit. That's the place, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, Dumbrell went off and yeah. Luff went off, so there was all that stuff on the road. Daryl, can you add to that? Yeah, Billy, it's interesting, actually. Rob Crawford's run around here mad. They were on the radio to Murph. The other issue was that this could even put Murph into the pits at some stage. The front spoiler apparently was just full of gravel and junk, and uh, they're just going to keep an eye on it. Rick Kelly. <laughs> Well, we said there might have been a few more twists in this road, and there certainly have been. We may not get the rain, but we've had plenty of other the incidents. The exact same thing happened here in 99 or 2000. The last corner, we came around the corner and there were blokes everywhere, and there was just no warning, garbage on the road, poof, off you go. Look at that. Have a go at the front of the Kmart car. Absolutely cake full. 12 odd laps to run, and right now you go, Mr. Water Temperature, so what? Bradley Jones. They've been <laughs> fluctuating between uh, oh, despair and desperation. Now he finds himself in fourth place, and he's looking pretty good on Murphy. That's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, and he needs a bit of sugar. It's been a tough year for Brad. Kelly leads the race by six tenths from Cameron McConville. Doesn't look like Cameron's actually got the speed to go past him. Greg Murphy is back in the action, but another six tenths behind McConville. Then Bradley Jones. Then this battle here. You can see Brad just ahead of uh, Russell on the circuit. Kelly hasn't exactly uh, set the world on fire this weekend, but he's been consistent. And uh, I don't know which he counters more, more satisfying win, this one or Eastern Creek, assuming he can carry out the victory, of course. There's seven laps to go. Cameron McConville, Brad Jones and Stephen Ellery all in the top ten and all heading for their best results so far this season. Yeah, pretty significant for them too. McConville and Jones certainly need results at this point in the season. And this is far from over at this point with oh. lots of little battles to be determined here. And Brad's under a lot of pressure from Ingle and Bright is in turn pressuring Russell. So, you know, the last couple of corners look pretty willing there. And you don't want to get too far off line because even though they might have swept the water off the circuit from that earlier incident... Uh, Bradley's dropped a spot or two here. So uh, Russell's got by, Jason's got by. So something happened up at turn three or four. Let's Great. go back down to pit lane with Greg. Neil, the boy or the man with the pace, I should say, is Jason Bright right now. We should bear in mind that he stopped 
or had an extra pit stop for tyres. So he's got the freshest set of tyres of that bunch that he's around at the moment. He's got good pace in oh, car 50. This. What is going on here? Ambrose and Engel are muscling through. Jones obviously is slower, but these guys are laps down. Jones is fighting for fourth place in the uh, in the race. Of course, he's lost that now, but Ambrose and Engel are a long way behind him. Yeah, he must have taken some damage because he's struggling there to maintain the pace, but he was getting the shove. Here we go from Russell Engel. This is up the old pit straight, up towards turn three, gets down the inside. So that's where the passing manoeuvre happens cleanly. And that invites Jason Bright through as well. But why has he suddenly got no pace? It was strange to see Marcus muscling him up there at turn nine. And uh, Craig Bounce. is off as well for some reason. Is this uh, turn 11? Had a thing about the pit lane entry, but decided not to go down there. This would have to be one of the most chaotic races we've seen for a long time. Yeah, Lowndes is further back than the ambulance too. He's just um, conducting a test session here. But yes, Ambrose still on that 30 points that I was talking about and Scaife 18. So they're salvaging something for the race, but that was very aggressive driving among drivers who are battling for prominent positions here. Jones back in eighth now. Rick Kelly with still about a six-tenth uh, gap on McConville. This is the closer battle really, and that's Ingle in fourth and Bright in fifth and you can see it all unfolding. Incidentally, Kelly heading for 1,116 points if the position stayed the same. That would give him an eight-point championship lead over Stephen Richards. And then another seven points to Bright, seven points to Ambrose, and a fair gap to Greg Murphy, who wouldn't have been so far back if he had have been able to stay in the race lead just not long ago, but he is in third place on the track right now. So. If positions stay the same over the last five laps, we're in for a real squeeze. Oh, Ingle's got problems here. He squeeze. gets all squeezed up on the outside at turn 11, and Bright goes through. He had the brakes locked, and Jason got down there. Unbelievable stuff in the later stages of this race. So Bright to fourth, Ingle back to fifth. Ellery's next a couple of seconds further back. And I really don't believe it given the weather we've had, but the big dark clouds that we spoke of, trust me, they were there, but they have skirted the circuit. Uh, the reason that Bradley's in trouble is he's running out of fuel. Oh dear, well there was that 60 lap. I'm surprised though, with safety car, he took on uh, fuel and lap 39, yeah. and we figured that 60 laps would be all right. We've had a lot of safety cars, so. It's very marginal apparently, but they're, they're bluing on the radio at the moment. I wonder if there might be a pickup problem uh, get low they were close but as we said there have been so many stoppages in this race we would have thought that all those guys who were around that 60 lap mark would have been able to uh, close it out Murphy now attacking Cameron McConville he seems to have found the speed that he had earlier in the race last lap round was a 126.2 but uh, nearly everyone up the front has been able to maintain the low to mid 126s Stephen Johnson off that's a shame. He was looking so promising and he was 11th in the field when this happened. So Shell Helix Racing have found some speed, but they just can't find any luck. And it's Wilson off again. Well, that's another similar story. There have been a lot of hard luck stories in what has been a fairly evenly balanced field this weekend at Winton. Once the weather cleared and the track dried, there were many contenders. So it's Kelly McConville having a great run here and uh, I'm sure he's enjoying every moment of it. it. Hasn't been easy for him. Greg Rust. Well, guys, I'm just wondering what the problem is for Brad Jones. There is now smoke starting to emerge from the rear of car 21 and he's dropped right off the pace massively. The team are on the radio to him. So I think this may be a problem that's worse than, than perhaps a miscalculation of fuel. He did argue with him. Bradley's good at calculating the strategy on the run while he's driving, and he did argue the point when he came in for his fuel stop that he thought it may have been a little too soon. So I'll come back to you with more shortly. Of course, Neil, there is a variation in fuel consumption between uh, these cars. Absolutely, but uh, and, uh, maybe there's some other know. issue here. If you do the calculations, he should be OK, and they were reassuring him that fact on the, on the radio. Uh, Bright's just done the fastest lap of the race on lap number 96, which is pretty impressive. He's done a low 25, 25-1. So, gee, that, that's uh, frustrating for Brad, who was in position for the best result of the year, but just goes to show the point that Larry Perkins, I think, made earlier in the day about how quickly things can change. Yes, uh, we certainly put the mocker on Gary Rogers, then Larry Perkins, as Jason tries to 
show a bit of that obvious pace down the straight. This is all good news for Rick Kelly in the championship, as you said. And Stephen Richards down in 14th now, but he still gets 114 points for his trouble. And really, to stay in this championship, you have to be good making finish. sure that on your worst day, you've got 100 points more or more. Uh, and that's been the case with the top runners. I think uh, this current track position of everybody puts Bright in the lead of the series, but a long, long, long way to go in the championships. It's too early to be talking about what that all means necessarily. Not so long to go in this race, though, and it looks like Rick Kelly can pull it out of the fire. He's three-tenths up on Cameron McConville. And there's a little squirm from the Bright Commodore as he attacks for third position. He's trying to force his way onto the podium here before this eventful this, day is over. This. He almost does. Lock up from Murphy. No. Has he got a problem? No, I didn't. it's not a lock up. The wheels were still turning, but there is smoke. Yeah, some other drama going on there. I don't know whether it's bodywork or something more sinister. No, oh. it's, it's having a bit of a hemorrhage. That's oh, water. Look at the oh. fluid coming out. It's got uh, glycol or something coming out, and uh, they've lost an engine. And the reason for that is all the debris in the splitter. The water temperature will have gone berserk, and that engine has had it. And with two laps to go, this has been... A day of massive fluctuations for Greg Murphy. Hot. I don't think it's going to make it. He's dumped a fair bit of fluid on the circuit. Rick Kelly now so only two, two tenths ahead of McConville. So it's a weekend that started out like garbage. Actually peaked for a while, looked pretty good, and now it's back to garbage again. He's gone full circle. Unbelievable. Brad, he's out of fuel. I just had the message. What next? Well, Rick Kelly is not safe with one lap to go. McConville. Rick's on for a second win of the year. A great performance at Eastern Creek. There's a gap there to Jason Bright now. He's secured third position. Russell Ingle is close behind him, but I don't know if anyone's going to try anything bold here. Ambrose is next, but of course he's a few laps down, having sat in the infield for a long time, and Mark Scaife in a similar situation. Paul Morris further back there is heading for an eighth position here. Garth Tander, who looked like he might pinch the win at one stage, back in ninth. But his teammate is doing extremely well, and no one in the Gary Rogers garage would begrudge this performance here. Tander might be better placed in the championship, but Cameron McConville is heading for a very powerful second place here. That's assuming Rick Kelly can keep it together. Lance is back in the pit lane as well. Well, last so lap, mate. Last, last lap, Rick. Last lap. So she's on here. Somebody else just got a fuel warning. It was Russell Ingle, I believe. So he's only got a lap to run. He only needs a couple of litres of fuel. Will McConville try and attack, or will he just stay there and shadow Kelly? Hopefully force him offline, because if he goes offline, there's enough muck on this circuit to so bring about some problems. A few people are either not filling them up or they're burning more fuel than um, than the data that I've obtained, because uh, it's probably more like the former than the latter. Maybe not just filling the things right up. But uh, certainly a few people talking fuel at this point in the race. So only half this racetrack to run now for Rick Kelly. Can he pull this off? McConville, it's a critical result for him. He really needs to get a decent bag of points and on that podium. Does so he want to have a lunge or settle for second? Well, it's a good bargaining position for Cameron McConville. Tander almost certain to leave Gary Rogers Motorsport next year. So will Cameron be the senior driver there? Will someone else come in and assume either a number one or an equal footing? Look at Bright closing in as well. As this race settles down, Kelly in defensive mode here. McConville not quite close enough under brakes. Oh, Look at he's this! Get down there. Cameron McConville goes for the big move and pulls it off on Rick Kelly in the closing stages. That was massive. Into the main straight now. A drag to the finish here at Minton. And this is one of the great wins of the last few years. Cameron McConville. And they'll be dancing in the streets of Wangaratta tonight. How is that? Murphy gets home with no water in that engine. What about McConville? He's come from 40 metres out. Now, and unbelievably, Rick Kelly has just left a, a hole there and he's Go driven easy, straight through it. Yellow. We win that. Okay, mate, just get on there. Get on it. Well, uh, there may Don't have worry, been a yellow flag. The there may have been a yellow. Away. He could well have passed under the yellow. There was a stranded car. There was a stranded car and McConville has not seen the yellow flag. Oh, no. Uh, this is... Well, hang on a minute. 
Rick Kelly's talking about the yellow flag. He's talking about going easy. Let's have a look here. Well, I don't know. We'll have to wait and have verification from race control as to what that's all about. Murphy's car is absolutely dead, but he, he just welded it together and got it to the line. Well, these guys might be in for a rude shock soon. Great celebrations going on here in the Valvel and Cummins team, but uh, we're not too sure. Be we'll come and grab because your helmet Murphy and you was stranded. The, the podium will then be up on the old star finish line. Because Murphy... You have to tell me what to do next, because I'm a bit unfamiliar with this bit. Murphy actually got across the line. He's been recorded in fifth position and then immediately stopped, which is what you do when the thing is shot. Was there all this question about the yellow flag is something to do with turns 11 and 12. And we'll get to the bottom of it for you. Confirmation on the Shell Helix scoreboard. McConville is provisional winner from Rick Kelly, Jason Bright, Ingle Murphy, Ellery, Kelly, Morris, Tander, and Glenn Seaton home in 10th. We are getting uh, a stack of reports coming from pit lane at the moment. Obviously, there's quite a bit of confusion there. We'll sort it out for you after the break. These are the final placings uh, at the moment, if you know what I mean. We'll be back. Well, the man who seems to have won this round of the championship, Cameron McConville, that is fantastic. You needed it, but there's a bit of controversy here. Rick seems to think you've passed under yellow. Can you uh, shed some light on it? Well, from my point of view, Rusty, I was at the green flag point. So once you pass the green flag point, you're racing again. I was surprised that he didn't shut the door there. So, uh, you know, you're still racing when you get to the green flag point, and uh, that's my point of view. So I've got to thank the team for a great car today. We just soldiered on, and uh, to GRM, Valvoline, Cummins and Repco, Thanks very much. Top result, Cam. You deserve it. Excellent. Thanks, Rusty. Rick, this is a confusing finish, and uh, you definitely thought that yellow flag was there. Oh, the yellow flag was there. That's why I didn't bother blocking. Um, there's not much I can say. I'm not, I'm not too happy with this, and I'm not going to proceed because, um, um, you know, I didn't bother blocking. It was last, last, uh, second last corner, and the yellow flag was out, and we all know you can't pass under yellows, and um, Cameron thought he would, and he's been awarded the win, so I don't know what to say, mate. It's just very disappointing. Thanks, Rick. Thanks. Well, Jason Bright, that has got to be the charge of the round. You made an extra stop by the sounds of things for tyres under safety and it's paid big dividends. Yeah, I mean, in that incident with Scaife, you know, you know, we obviously lost a lot of ground and you know, we, because we stopped earlier, we're never going to work our way back to the front with that set of wheels. So, um, you know, we I radioed and said, guys, we're so far back, if there's a safety car, we should do tyres and just see how far we can blaze through if there's enough lap, laps left. And, um, you know, that, luckily that safety came probably not as early as we wanted it to, um, but, you know, it was there and... And the car was great. I mean, we, we missed an opportunity this weekend through um, through that incident. So, you know, it's um, but it's great that we managed to get so much back. And congratulations to the boys. Great call, Jason. Great result. Well done. Yeah. There were some hard luck stories, but some terrific battles today. And the championship points reflect that. Jason Bright leads by a hair's breadth, really, in the context of these points from Stephen Richards and Rick Kelly. Hasn't come out of it too badly for second place this weekend. And Marcus Ambrose from Winton, on behalf of all the crew, it's goodbye. <laughs>